So why is this different from a normal dry brush? The reason why this is normal, different from a normal dry brush is because ideally a lot of people, well, most people will go for the nearest possible timing to hit their button, right? But what Nephew does here is slightly delay that timing. Let's look at it again. So what he'll do is slightly delay the timing. Why does he delay the time? He delays the timing so that you're as the opponent you're thinking that throw is now coming so now you look at his buttons he's trying to throw tech so once you do that then that opens up the world to delay button and then now that he got hit by delay button he gets the entire route okay now time to pay this is also something that you should be incorporating into your punishes unfortunately my character doesn't get this but um so essentially what you'll do you'll parry the super attempt or whatever the dp or whatever then you will drive rush do raw drive rush so that you can get the extra plus frames to get extra damage for cheaper okay and on this fine day we're doing a pro analysis all right so let's see Okay, this was a little bit of an odd choice. I wonder if he was aware whether this would hit. This was a little bit further out, but possibly be, maybe because he was under the impression that he could reach. Not sure why he went for it. Nor was it a good shimmy, though. Ah, you see what I'm saying? If you're if you're committed to if you're committed to thinking that your opponent's gonna throw you in this case. Up forward, right? Up forward. It gets you out of the situation. They're now in the corner. Unfortunately, he didn't go for the right. Uh, he went for a drive reversal and got them cooked. Mm -mm. Notice how she's just not drive rushing in because a lot of juries especially around like that diamond right they like to just like hold forward and go in but notice how he's playing patient not too antsy now this is namely because he doesn't have a lot of drive meter right so let's say this is all part of drive meter management let's say he just <laughs> drive rushes in there then what what happens right at the end of the day you only have like quarter of a bar left and then it, let's say they dp after the plus frames then you implode, you know? Mm. Jinrai kicks is annoying just across the board. Okay, also the usage of the occasional usage of dive kick is very good. Namely because when you're doing the dive kicks, it changes the trajectory of uh, or your timing of when you actually touch them is very good because it, when you jump in the air, you're pretty much committed to that uh, arc, right? But when you use a dive kick, it kind of changes the direction of that arc. So it makes it a little bit harder to enter your characters like uh, Jamie has one. Um, Dalsam has one. Cami, of course, has one as a core part of her kit, um, obviously. And then, uh, no, I think I mentioned them all, actually. So just like that, got the punish counter. So that right there, known as a cross cut. So cross cuts are generally when someone jumps over your head, you're still able to do the DP input. There's different ways to actually accomplish this, but in in uh yeah and in his case he went for half circle back half circle back forward punches okay then he just held the button dashed forward get the plus streams try to shimmy him right he's trying to cast a shimmy because most of the people are going to think that grab is coming when you get that close to them so he's trying to bait out the shimmy there Now both have to play relatively passive because their meter is down. So this is, again, meter management at this level is so insane and so crazy because they're aware of their meter. They're both aware of their meter, but they also don't want to take too many uh, forward advances because that might get them cooked. So in this case, instead of trying to parry it, he just decided to just take it, right? Because at the end of the day, the way he was going to go about this is that he would have drive rushed in anyway. So now it's just playing patient. 
right notice how you're not doing too much right not doing too much not trying to mash out of it just taking back space right but i i want to take notice to it's something so small but even just noticing that small walk forward to gain a little bit more ground that you lost is so important like look she back dashes and then walks forward just to check that space why does she walk forward because ideally you want when you're walking forward right your opponent might want to walk back in order to try and whiff punish you so when you walk forward you're taking obviously she's on the back foot right because she's burnt out but the fact that she took that walk forward makes the ken want to walk back in order to be in a proper range to whiff punish anything that may come out thus keeping a little bit of the ground that you just lost right see how see how he took some steps back just so that he could be in range to whiff punish something unfortunately she went for the heavy uh heavy punch that goes pretty far right got the whiff punish probably gonna take a stock off of this or no he's gonna try and take liberties so right now even though uh nephew is in burnout he's still on top in this case even though if he may rush in as long as um nephew decides to block or try to interrupt this you'll still be fine but it's uh, ill-advised to try and interrupt this unless you're really confident in the fact that you can interrupt it only because if he gets that counter hit he's gonna confirm this into a combo into a kill right but if he just decides to block it out let's say he gets the plus frames and then he goes for throw even off a throw still not dead and then all his meter will come back anyway right decided to play super passive super calm and then went in got the kill hey simple and clean jump in an age-old classic Okay, so that is what we know as a frame kill. So the reason why we do this frame kill, so this is one of the really nice frame kills that not only, so why do we do frame kills? Frame kills allow you to get like super perfect, consistent meaty timings because you want um, to make sure that you're meeting your opponent properly. They're not able to mash or whatever have you. So what you can do is that you can decide while they're on the ground, you can whiff a button into another button and that secondary button will be meaty timing aka the moment they wake up see what i'm saying you can't match it oh i'm not sure oh I, I think i know what he went for he went for probably air tatsu unfortunately didn't get the input and then end up dying for it it's unfortunate but you know what happens it is what it is right okay so on to that match two okay again notice how there's up forward in use okay baited the dp now we went for di here because we wanted to make sure that they got broken right because especially because look at their super meter they don't have access to level one right so with that being said di would definitely be the best way to get the max amount of um drive gauge damage Okay, now you just meaties. Now you have to play the strike throw game. Might do it again. Oh, no, decided not to do it again. So notice how he's standing at this range. This is a range that I want you guys to start standing at. Why do you want to stand in this range? Because you're right out of um, that crushing medium kick range. It's just right out of it. So where he's standing, it may look, it'll look like he can hit. And then he'll just walk a slight spidge back. It can whiff punish it. On top of which, it is peak area for catching anti airs. If you guys just start standing at this range alone and just be aware, mindful of things that they can do, they're free. Oh, see what I mean? See, standing at this range. Tried to get the crushing media kick, nothing came out, nothing came of it, right? Because if he gets that crushing media kick, he can drive rush off of it and he gets a lot more value off of it, right? But he's standing at a range that's right out of it. That makes him kind of feel as though he can definitely go for it, but he can't. Then he tries to jump, gets anti-eared. The peak spa spacing, okay? See what I'm saying? How to control the game. Nah, no shot. Okay, that's nasty. This guy's nasty. Okay, and then from here, this is an easy. So what happens here? Let's say he decides to wake up level one, right? 
unlikely he will i don't think he will but let's say excuse me he decides to do so if he decides to do so then what happens to him right he gets blown back whatever whoop de who then he, he's forced to either throw fireballs or try and uh rush in okay but the thing is is that when he drive rushes in any sort of poke any sort of if he doesn't keep it tight if he's not constantly baiting he has to constantly be fearful of his life the entire rest of the game while he where while the um while nephew can kind of just sit on his lead and be a little bit egregious with the fact that he can play his health bar as an advantage so he, he obviously decides not to he tries to go for a cheeky overhead it doesn't work throw he has to be super mindful of his offense here right so now we're in a territory that um obviously nephew has to be super careful about how he approaches things because the next hit will kill him but it seems that he'll clutch it out just now yeah okay perfect parry so we do choose like don't get me wrong right so when i say that he's patient like i'm not saying that they don't do it at all right obviously because it's such a strong option but with that being said we're a little bit more nuanced with the option we throw it in you know gently but some of you guys will just keep drive rushing forward drive rushing forward drive rushing forward it makes your play very predictable okay playing patient he didn't unfortunately get it. Has to hold this now. Okay, so here he has to start holding this strike strike throw game. And honestly, this strike throw game is pretty vicious with Ken. But again, this is why we don't delay throw, right? He definitely does it, he does it a lot less than um most players do but notice how even the pros are can't succumb to this right oh that's unfortunate yeah that's it hmm that's rough okay last game last round sorry hey went for a jump he wasn't ready for the jump okay let's talk about this so why is this different from a normal drive rush? The reason why this is normal, different from a normal drive rush is because ideally a lot of people, well, most people will go for the nearest possible timing to hit their button, right? But what nephew does here is slightly delay that timing. Let's look at it again. So what he'll do is slightly delay the timing. Why does he delay the time? He delays the timing so that your as the opponent you're thinking that throw is now coming so now you look at his buttons he's trying to throw tech so once you do that then that opens up the world to delay button and then now that he got hit by delay button he gets the entire route okay now time to pay this is also something that you should be incorporating into your punishes unfortunately my character doesn't get this but um so essentially what you'll do you'll parry the super attempt or whatever the dp or whatever then you will drive rush do raw drive rush so that you can get the extra plus frames to get extra damage for cheaper Okay, obviously he could have done like a some type of burnout combo or whatever have you, but he chose not to do the burnout combo because, or rather the combo that would burn him out because honestly, he's he has a lead. He wants to secure the lead. Like look at the health difference, right? So now he's just comfortable and now he can kind of just cool on the lead, not be too aggro, kind of take it easy. So notice how he's a little bit more chill now, like he has the lead. Now he's just forcing you into situations where you have to do something a little bit risky to make the change. Oh my goodness, this character, bro. Okay, yep, yeah, you're gonna have to hold this. Getting away with quite a few jumps, wow. Unfortunately, the EXDP didn't work and Nephew got over it. Right, and the reason why he was able to play a little bit more risky like this is because he had that life lead. So whenever you're playing, you got to think about your health bar. And so there are three main bars: obviously the super gauge, the drive meter, and your health bar. Right. 
and leveraging all three of them can take you so far so especially my geef players out there leverage your health okay leverage the fact that you can eat a couple more fireballs than the rest of the cast and all and for those who have normal health right leverage the fact that you're up on health right you can take a little bit more risks because you can take those situations a little bit better right so those are things to, to keep in mind let's go on to the last game all right last game up let's do it okay again not too aggro right just eating these obviously with parry is what i mean right not too aggro standing in a range where we want to whiff punish things but also don't want to expose ourselves to sorry mm, unfortunate not sure where he went for that though that's a good interrupt on the drive rush and look at this look at this guys this is something that i see consistently amongst um gold plat and half of diamond. the first half of diamond is that we do not optimize our positioning why do we throw them in the corner because we're just that much stronger see now we're one combo away from putting them in the corner now they're stuck in the corner and once again we run our offense in a way where they're stuck in the corner they gotta guess for game he guessed wrong ggs shake my hand okay not too crazy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has to hold this and the beauty thing about grab, at least for right now, is that grab recovers stupidly quick, meaning that even in scenarios where someone jumps forward, you can still anti their them. But why do I still recommend jump forward is because even though we chose jump forward, we're still out the corner. Right? So now we're miss green, even though we took the hit, you know, leverage your health, even though uh, we took the hit. We're now mid screen again, and I'd rather take whatever is coming to me mid screen than be in the corner, right? And all all it took was say I don't know like twenty health, twenty five health, sometimes thirty. Damn. Okay. Notice how he's just blocking, right? Notice I want you to notice the fact that he's just blocking it out. Right, notice how he's not mashing delay tech, not trying to get out of every situation. He's just blocking, waiting for his turn, and takes his turn. Right? So this is another thing that I want to talk about. I will I wanna go into depth a little bit more in a different video. But essentially, what is so good about this is the fact that he acknowledged the fact that okay, I'm gonna have to block here, right? Then he goes in. He does crouch jab, then crouch short, right? And then he does another crouch jab. Once he sees this secondary crouch jab, he's already acknowledged that now you are out of range of your um, light normals. So anything that comes after this is fake. And he acknowledges this and takes the first opportunity to hit a button. So then it ends up interrupting his um, medium punch when he was trying to go for a cheeky medium punch. So this is something that is a little bit more nuanced, but when you notice it, then you're stopping uh, your opponent from taking extra turns that they don't deserve. And he just shut it down. Okay, now he's gonna cap out. This probably won't kill, but probably leave him one shot though. With that being said, he is in burnout. And while his meter is recovering, his is in. It killed. Dang. So I talked about the things generally that I wanted to go through. This was definitely a good replay of, of all the things that I talk about in my videos. Uh, once again, if you want to see more of this, put down below what character you want to see. And we'll definitely do more of these. You know, this was fun. I really enjoyed it and you learn a lot from it. So let's do it again sometime. Have a good one.